Okay. Do you have a bottle? You're going to get all kinds of treats today. So, again, the solstice, fun time to party, ancient time, good way to sort of check in with yourself physically, emotionally, dietary wise, right? Every season, we should kind of tweak and adjust their diet. So, this is just like a really good way to drop in, check in, right? Check in with yourself and see how you're doing. Um, kids usually like to celebrate because who doesn't like fun foods and cooking and all this stuff. This is a good job between Victoria and Rachel because I just kind of decided this would be fun to do when I got here to work today. So this is all kind of spontaneous. So mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about everything. I'm actually going to somewhat not cook, but I'm going to actually kind of, I used to do cooking classes all the time. It's really stressful because it's hard to cook talk about all the foods and their medicinal traits and I used to do it myself. So it was like really stressful. So I'm trying to maybe get back into doing some class cooking classes for a group, but um, so this is a good adventure into it. We're just gonna try all kinds of stuff, talk as we go. We're gonna cover summer heat and eventually get into the cardio system, but we're gonna have fun with this. First, does anybody we're going to send around treats constantly. So first treat I'm going to pass around. Uh, this is my new favorite drink in the universe right now. This is made by Lagunas Brewing. It is an alcohol-free, it's a hop beer or a hop water. So it's zero calories, no sugars, no Splenda, no... Uh, What's the other keto erythritol? one? No erythritol, nothing like that. Just hops, water, carbonation, a little bit of natural. Food. I think they put a little lemon in there. So I'm going to pass this around. You can get this. Uh, I get it at Costco. So the first one was gifted to me. So I've been hooked on it ever since. It's just like a nice, really low calorie drink. And it's just barely hoppy enough to taste it. There's also hop water, which a lot of you have tried, that's even more hoppy, but this is like kind of more mellow. Remember, hops are very cold, have a cold energy, cold thermal nature, so they cool our body down. So it's like a great summer drink. So I'll pass it around. Anybody wants to try a shot? We run out, let me know when we got more. Another one to go around. Oh, Nico's already doing that. Throw that on you. Okay. So we're going to celebrate the hops for summer because it's so cold, cooling. One of the best nervines for summer would be hops because it's one of the coldest nervines that we have. And remember, hops is very emotionally calming. People are like angry and upset because it's bitter and it has a little bit of that liver component. So it's really good when people have the summer heat and irritation and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, Victoria made what I call magic cookies. Um, do you want to tell everybody what you did? These are really beautiful. Um, they are. Um, are you an artist? What? Are you an artist? Yes, kind of. I don't think you're an artist. This is art cookies. <laughs> um, they are uh, what's it called? The butter cookies. Butter shortbread. Cookies. Shortbread. Yes, thank you. They're shortbread cookies. Butter. Uh, gluten free shortbread cookies. Um, and then they have herbs from my garden, fresh pressed into the top of them and baked. So there are all just a bunch of different kind of flowers that were in bloom, or lemon balm, labrama, and things like that. Thank you. Thank you. Magic. You bite them, and I was like, you know, like when you drink like a carbonated beverage, how it like evaporates in your mouth. Like this, almost just like evaporated. So I'm gonna pass these around. They're super. They're gluten free. They're grain free. Um, not grain free. Yeah, that water you can get yes. at Costco, but there's probably other places. I'm sure Target places like yeah. that have it. Is it in the beverage section? Okay. It's by the drinks. It's not by the alcohol. It's, it's alcohol free. It's not. Uh, alcohol. Alcohol. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Anybody want? Thank you. Yeah, ask yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. There's um, just the video show that I've got for everybody else. 
Okay. Okay. We also because um, Missy brought in. You want to everybody, but you're a little surprised. Mm. Thank you. I brought in some lychee. They just got some in at Whole Foods today. So I cut it in half because there's a big seed in the middle of it. Okay. But all I know is that it's from China and Malaysia. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So these lychees are, they're good for your stomach and they're good for your lungs and they're good for your liver. We use them a lot in Chinese medicine. We do need like a spoon. Um, We'll pass a fork around to everybody. Everybody can hear one as it goes around. Oh, okay. As we go around here today. So I this would be mine, mind. but yes. Those are really good. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is your fork for the day, so keep it here. Okay. It's all the plastic forks we have to ourselves. Those are really delicious. Those are better than most slain cheese that I've ever had. Sorry. Is What's that? What do you say to me? Like cheese. So these are not lychee berries, right? These are light, they're pronounced light. Um, these are delicious. Those are really aromatic. Usually oh, that, sorry. That yeah. sweet <laughs> it's like a pretty summer day to me. Yeah. Yeah. Good I like that. Stomach yeah. and the liver <laughs> and the heart. Um, <laughs> yeah. They're also a little bit good for the lungs, but they're they're a good like summer party, right? Remember, with summer, we're thinking of the heart. That's our main target one. The heart, pericardium, is a little small intestine. So, with that in mind, we have one of the great medicines that gets neglected all the time, which is strawberry. Remember, strawberry, Dr. Mzina Church, shaped like a heart. A lot of newer research shows that strawberry is one of the main heart. Supportive foods for your heart and blood vessels can help prevent like strokes and it's a powerful antioxidant to the heart. Not as strong as like Hawthorne, but not okay. to be okay. underrated, right? Filled with antioxidants, okay. right? Everything that's red and colorful, we know is filled with antioxidants, right? Anything that's going to stain your shirt. Right? Anything you would have a fit if your kids were eating over your carpet and you would really healthy. Okay. 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 Those are pretty good too. So also with chocolate or with summer, one of our main heart herbs, we also said was cacao, because remember cacao is bitter. So it enters the heart, but we actually say cacao penetrates the heart. So cacao is one of the great catalysts for cardiovascular and heart herbs, whether we're talking about depression and heart melancholy and sadness or whether we're talking about actual heart disease, uh, chocolate lowers cholesterol, um, it's been shown to lower blood pressure. This is not chocolate with a lot of sugar right here. We're talking about like cacao. I don't know where Rachel gets these little sundial things with their cute and these corn things show up every solstice that are super cute. So, um, Remember, cacao has a lot of mood of lifting the antidepressant. It does have some stimulating compounds in it. It has a lot of uh, has a lot of things that can alter and affect mood and create some euphoric like feelings. That's why we love it so much. But why do people crave chocolate? Right, it's not the sugar that created it, it stimulates something. So. 
this is why chocolate's also always so associated with love and romance because it really really affects the heart. But maybe one of the few American things that actually makes sense culinary wise is the Valentine's chocolate covered strawberries. That makes total sense. We have like two hearts, like a heart herb and a heart food. So I'll pass the little chocolates around. <laughs> Who's going to have like the cow ceremony? I'm going to cover something with that. Okay. P, we have a solstice tea. You should all understand this by now. I'm going to ask you why. So the tea is St. John's Wort. Hawthorne. Berry, popcorn, leaf, and flower, linden, rosemary, and the last key ingredient, rose, and then the catalyst, garlic. Okay. Why does this make sense for the heart, for the solstice? By the way, Rachel, I think Rachel got all of these for everybody's pillow today. Yeah, whoever wants to take. We have French St. John's wort. Remember, what do we do with this tonight? Put it under your pillow tonight. You have uh, really wild dreams and often visions, sometimes prophetic dreams. Um, uh, I've often, when I was younger, I used to give this to people who had no concept of natural healing. Just like, just put this under your pillow. Sometimes I wouldn't even tell them, put it under their pillow. When they wake up, you're like, did you dream? And it was just amazing how wild the dreams people have with this. Um, one past student even had a vision of St. John, like actually came to her and like had this huge like visionary experience so uh i'll have rachel pass these around maybe let the camera see the saint john's word too um so why saint john's word today because it is the herb of summer it is the herb of the solstice this is traditionally it's our day right um, and it also represents the sun, right? Day of the longest day of the year, the most powerful day of the sun. Um, also a reminder that every day after this is a little bit darker, right? So we have to remember that. This, the solstices are kind of like we say in Chinese, yin within yang, right? We celebrate the season. They're the part of us that's like, especially in summer, thinking about winter coming. And in winter, we're hopeful because, oh, yay, it's the darkest day of the year. But every day after this, is more light. <clears throat> so this is uh, St. John's Lord because it's, we're not using it in the tea because it's nervine, because it's very, has a lot of solar properties. It's very mood uplifting for summer, but it also is just the herb of summer. So we'll pass this around, we'll let everybody take some of that. And I think, Oh, this is the hydro. So Rachel got some of the rosemary hydrosol from the class. Maybe you just still a little bottle for everybody. These are all the gifts. So did everybody make the hydrosol class? You love it? It's not oh, cool. Magical farm, magical place. Can we go yeah. back to the store at their farm? Yeah. There's so much they can teach. They have yeah. so much stuff. Yeah. I would yeah. love to learn about that. Amazing people. Uh, so we also have a little gift of a little hot horn for everybody to take home to your family. So your rest of your family can feel included and not left out. So this tea bag has popcorn and hibiscus. Why does this make sense for us as practitioners? Because hibiscus, remember, cools the heart. It cools summer heat. Popcorn and being an actual company run by herbalists, traditional medicinal is actually run by practitioners. Um, it actually has popcorn berry and the popcorn leaf and flower, all three of them together. So 
in our tea we're drinking, we have hawthorn berry, hawthorn leaf, and flower because this is also the herb of summer, the herb of the heart, everything related to the heart, right? Hawthorn, physically, emotionally, heart health, blood pressure, solve this really super unhealthy elderly person today who, you know, so unhealthy and just has like severe leg edema and can't really exercise or move because of his health limitations and just um, Hawthorne capsules, just nothing fancy, like completely remedied all of his lower leg edema, lower his blood pressure. <laughs> Really helped his aid a lot. Just you know, very simple intervention. So we'll pass these around if you want. Is rosemary a great herb for summer? I think it's one of our major heart herbs. So rosemary is a great herb to use for summer solstice, and in summer it's just super, super heart opening, heart expanding. Yes, Everybody can take a little sprig of St. John's wort or break off a little piece. And everybody can take a hydrosol and you can take a little tea bag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in our tea, we talked about the St. John's wort, the hot barn. We also have linden. What's the old linden for? Also for the heart. What? Nature, what property does linden bring to this tea, though? We think about it in the formulating perspective. It's bringing some demulsant and some moisture to it because this has some, you know, warming herbs and some drying herbs, some bitter herbs. So we're adding this balancing moisture component to it. Linden is one of the best teas to drink in summer because when we're sweating a lot, Losing a lot of vital fluids, so it's a really good summer tea. And we also have Glendon cold infusion for everybody. Try it too. In addition to it's just going to be like heat up, treat it up, everything. So remember, Linden. Um, Hawthorne is, remember, emotionally really good for guarded people who have had a lot of heartaches and heartbreaks, can't let people in their life, don't feel like they can open up. Um, Linden is for people who have a really loving heart, but just have a lot of heartaches and pains in the past, but are still really searching for um, <laughs> love, right? Like the bumblebee. So you'll notice, was this only cold infusion? Yeah. Okay. Everybody can take a little shot of this. This is Linden cold infusion that Rachel made. It's not super aromatic like hot Linden tea would be, because remember the heat captures a lot of the essential oil, the aroma compounds. But remember the cold water is how we infuse demulsants. So it's actually kind of like, Slightly linden tasting, but not extreme, but it's very demulsant. If you want to know how demulsant this is, just rub some on your face. You might not feel it at first, but if you rub this on your face, you'll feel how demulsant this is cold. And it's refreshing. It's like a really fun summer refreshing. That is good as green tea on your face. It is as good as green tea on your face. Yeah, different, like this is more, this would be more for like, uh, I guess green tea would be too, rashes and irritations and wrinkles, collagen. collagen. Green tea is better for like sun damage and just overall health of the skin. Okay, everybody likes the linden? Yeah? Okay. Then we have rosemary. Why do we want rosemary in a formula like this? Your heart. It's yeah, rosemary is warm too, right? It's it's a circulatory stimulant. So now we're also bringing all of our blood vessels to the formula. Uh, remember, our heart is about us. 
our blood vessels are about how we relate to the outer world. So people that have more circulation, blood vessel problems, it's more an issue of not so much the heart itself, but how do you relate to the world? How do you bring the vision inside your heart out to the world, right? So people usually either have heart problems or vascular problems, sometimes both, but they're, they're very different to us in natural medicine. Rosemary also acts as a really dynamic catalyst. Remember, rosemary really powerfully opens your heart. So this creates like a real expansive opening effect to this tea of drinking. Okay. The second to last one is rose, which one of the quintessential antidepressant herbs, one of the quintessential sad heart herbs. We use it for grieving. We use it for people who've lost loved ones. We use it for PTSD and trauma. But it's also just a great nervine and one of the great, one of the most powerful antioxidants on the planet. So it's also good for the heart, again, physically and emotionally. Um, and remember, rose does not interact with antidepressants, so it's a great an antidepressant for the rose. Okay. The last herb in the mix is yarrow. This is a really important herb in this formula. This formula wouldn't be ideal without it. Why yarrow? <laughs> it's cold. It's cold. So we have something cold finally. <clears throat> That's one reason. What other unique trait if we look at formulating holistically? What's the flavor of the heart? Flavor of summer? Bitter. So yarrow is very bitter. It is a digestive bitter. We could have put like wormwood in there or angelica or some other bitter, but we just use yarrow. Yarrow is also good because it is also a cold circulatory stimulant, which we don't have many examples of that. But it's also one of the great herbs to regulate body heat in the summer. It literally lowers your body temperature. And it's really good for heat stroke, heat exhaustion, all those things. Does this make sense? Anything not make sense? Anything else we would maybe add to really tweak this? Anything you're thinking we could have added to make it even better? Ideas? I mean, would we want to add a, a berry? We're going to add a, a okay. berry. Blueberry? Or... Which kind? A blueberry or a raspberry or something? Could have added like a blueberry or raspberry. For mm -hmm. circulation or blood vessels, or tastes good. I don't know. It tastes good. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We get, when we make formulas, we do taste is a huge factor, right? That could be that you know, we could actually put strawberry in it or wild things like that, right? Um. What else? I thought motherwort would be really good because motherwort is very cold and bitter, but it's like a very nervine for the heart, right? Hawthorn leaf, remember, is a nervine to the heart and the linden, but I thought maybe motherwort would have been good too. Cacao would have been really good in here too. So raw cacao. Elderflower? Elderflower, maybe. How come? I just like adding it to everything in the summer. <laughs> it's a great catalyst. <laughs> it's going to trade elderflower and really make the formula float outward to our pores and kind of regulate our body temperature and it's in season right now right it's in bloom everywhere right now. so lemon balm would be an amazing one here too it would never power mm -hmm. no lemon balm would would be good in here too for its uh solar properties it's mood uplifting properties it's cooling properties any of the other mints would be good too yeah peppermint wild mint those would all be good, okay? Okay. <clears throat> it's like we're jumping around so we're trying to cover all this as fast as possible. Okay, next little treat, one of my all-time favorites, I'll pass around, 
is sunflower sprouts or any sprouts. <laughs> These are my all time favorite. Why sunflower sprouts? I don't think anybody has a. Mm -hmm. Maybe give them a cup or something. Mm -hmm. Why sunflower sprouts? Sunflower is the truly native to this part of Nebraska summer solar food, right? It's in the sunflower family, sunflower seed. Mm -hmm. So this is like a true native food. Um, but remember, the sprout represents the new growth. So it's about like the growth. You know, in spring, we planted seeds. In summer, the sprouts are up and things are growing. Like in Chinese medicine, there's this idea of sprouts are really good to eat in summer because they represent like the emerging life force, the growth of the seeds that have actually matured, right? As we go into fall, we start to eat things that grow underground, right? Like potatoes and carrots and beets and root vegetables. And as we go deeper in the winter, we eat things that grow even deeper in the earth, right? So in summer, though, it's really good to eat sprouts. A lot of cultures do this. I'll pass this around. These would have to be my all-time favorite snack. They're so good. Those happen to be super tasty, too. Okay. What else do they have? They also have this cool traditional summer tea we have this cold infusion right you didn't infuse this did you this i want to try this is a beautiful looking right isn't that artful this is uh fresh elder flowers with uh just organic sliced cucumbers because remember so we made an elder cucumber water I want to show that to everybody. Yeah. 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 Um, elder flowers that are in bloom right now everywhere. Mm -hmm. Why do we drink cucumber water? It yeah, rehydrates. It has a ton of electrolytes. It's also very cold. The cucumber is very cold. So a lot of cultures and a lot of parts of the world will drink cucumber water in the summer. A lot of cultures will eat cucumber sandwiches. That's more like in Britain, I think in Ireland. The cucumber summer sandwich is like a lighter sandwich, usually with no meat or maybe just cheese, but you would remove meat a lot in summer because meat is why would we remove meat a little bit in the summer? It's heavy, yeah. heavy sweat. It's heavy, it's kind of hard to digest, but it's also very meat. All meat is heating. Mm -hmm. So there is no like cool meat necessarily, except fish. <laughs> so we're going to try this water. Um, why don't I? You don't need a support. Yeah, you can pour it, but I don't. Elder water is a traditional drink all throughout Europe, too. Let we'll this infuse the rest of it. Match. That just looks good. I just want to rub my face in that actually because elder flower is one of the best things for the pores you can do, like rinsing your face with elder flower. Is it in a lot of like face washes and stuff? Old ones that work. It's, it's a major acne herb topically to use either the tea of the flower or actually the like the infusion of the flower. And then cucumbers also used a lot on the face, right? We can use cucumbers on the eyes, right? We can use it on skin rashes. We can use it on sunburns. If we have heat stroke, we can we can eat cucumber. We can eat watermelon. Those are always and like readily available. Um, cucumber, the seeds are also very good for parasites. They're a major parasite. All squash seeds are good for parasites. So pumpkin seeds, 
squash seeds, cucumber seeds, they're all used for killing the parasite. So we'll pass this around. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that. Just have to swap. Like they're, more raw they're more effective raw. Yeah. That's really refreshing. Elders kind of light and a little bit earthy, and then you get the, the kind of cucumberiness. The cucumber is just so refreshing. Cucumber is like a great palate cleanser. My elderberry has produced so many flowers. Mm -hmm. I have dried a heaping pile. I have tinctured, and I still am going to have berries. More than usual. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So remember, nature gives us signs. Yeah. So that's a weird sign, right? You know, you know when elderflower, I noticed that I was in the country last last night driving around and noticed the elderflower is like prolific this year. So, so what does that tell us? We're going to need a little gold. Besides, obviously, we're going to need this, but. Yeah, so it tells us probably one of two things either it's nature saying, we're going to continue to be really hot and dry all summer, like the drought and the heat's going to continue, and it's telling us we need support cooling off. Mm -hmm. Or it's remember, nature is predictive two seasons ahead of time. So, what happens in summer tells us what's going to happen, like a uh, change when winter starts. So, that's probably a sign there'll be some other possibly kind of virus. That we'll have to remember in our notes that will re probably respond really well to elder flower, probably be more feverish and flu like. So, makes sense that we'll probably have an epic flu year. So, I noticed, so we were at Neil Woods the other day, and I noticed there's a ton of sumac, like way more than usual. <laughs> I, I guess I've just noticed it a lot more ever since being up there. Like it's crazy how much goes up there. They can yeah. control the burn. So I, I don't yeah. know, but it was so there was so much of it. The Mac is like another big summer heat or yeah. know, so it seems like it's gonna be hot this summer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're gonna make this in front of you. This is just when I could get a whole foods over my lunch hour. Trying to find the most summer solstice meal we could make without that much bread. I'm going to rinse my hands off the second time before it gets done. Food service. It's one of the health inspectors for the Texas Department of Health. Right. Yeah, one of the inspected restaurants and stuff. I let everything pass because I didn't care. I was there for my internship. I just wanted to talk to all the chefs and stuff. <laughs> Okay, so one of the all-time greatest summer foods is this little. Anybody know this little guy? No, One of the all-time great summer foods because it's bitter. This is a Belgian endive. So endive is one of the all-time great summer foods. It's truly, truly, extremely cold. Um, so I usually don't eat a lot of it, but it is so good in the right type of either stir fry or salad. My favorite way to eat this is grill it. You put it on the grill, just dip it in olive oil and a little seasoning and just grill it until it gets kind of like a little blackish and charred. Um, but it's very bitter, so you don't see it used a lot. But this is like one of our most important, like historic, ancient greens, right? Because a lot of the greens that we eat have been bred to not be very bitter, right? Because most people don't like bitter things. But endive is this is pretty much the same way it's been forever. 
So you can grill these, you can do all kinds of things with them. We're just gonna make like an impromptu cold salad. So, and I have very cooling. So this was what we do if we feel summer heat. Kind of like bok choy, you're just gonna like cut about the top half off. The bottom half isn't isn't super good. The part's not very good. So I'm just gonna cut the top off these. Ideally, we would pull off every leaf and grill them like that. That's like my all-time favorite. Um, it doesn't work good on a sandwich because they're so bitter, but they're really good in salads. So if you want to have a salad in summer <laughs> that really cools your body temperature down, but because they're green and bitter, this is one of the main food digestive bitters that we eat too, just for liver health. But we forget about it a lot. Is the bottom half more, is it puffed or what? It, yeah, I'll pass it around. It's kind of like, you know, when you cut bok choy, the bottom part gets more flavorless, kind of, okay. just like Thank firmer. You. It's not bad, but I mean, it's just not for a salad at least. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. When I lived in Texas, I had really, I had a ponytail and, um, on yeah. your head? Yeah. yeah. It was so weird that um, all the Hispanic women, all the moms thought I was Italian because I had my hair slicked back. And they all thought I was like a chef or something. So, and they all, I found this just so unusual. They all wanted me to date their daughters. And I like, I've never in my life had a mom like, oh, you should go out. You know, everybody, like once a day, somebody has to be in the house their daughter. <laughs> know how to react to this. This is unusual. <laughs> okay. This, but you know this one? Then all right. So this whole thing is edible. This is a major summer food. This is one of my all-time favorite foods. So what we're going to do is we will save these and then you'll grill these tonight. Save those. We're going to pull off the little parts of the leaves here, right? This we're going to chop up. This is really good in the salads, too. <clears throat> so, what do we use fennel the food for? Digestion. 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 So, this is one of the main foods. It's actually very cooling, so it's eaten in summer a lot. This is just the only really fun thing that I thought would pair good with endo without having a recipe or anything. So we're gonna take all the little leaves, cut them a little bit. We're gonna pull this to the side. This will just like put over our little salad here. The rest of it will cut up. So you can eat the whole part of it. So it's like celery, but it tastes like fennel, right? The kind of texture of celery. So last year I grew like a ton of that, and like, it was in my garden, and we couldn't use any of it because butterflies laid so many eggs in it. And so oh. we overwintered butterflies this winter and had wind butterflies like flocking them to open up in a house. Oh, that was so, so cool. That was so fun. Just like down Oh, oh, that's oh, the main part we want to eat. This is my favorite. I mean, the whole part's good. This you know, is like the most like favorite. Like, favorite. It's your it's, it's just took over. So fennel is different than celery. How? Like What's that? It works different parts of the body. Yeah, which ones? Celery works the lower part of the body. Like yes, celery works more the lower part of the body and the legs and edema, right? Because it flushes our kidney. Where does fennel go to, though? Uh, stomach. The sweet aromatic flavor goes right in the stomach, so it's really good for indigestion. Really good for stomach ache. This is a very traditional European food to eat raw in summer. 
Like this is a very old school type recipe with just fennel, endive, a little bit of spice, and maybe a little bit of dressing or something, or vinaigrette. <clears throat> but it is delicious. If you haven't had fennel, I'll pass this part around and eat some. These get a little harder sometimes. So I don't know. I'll cook them, I'll chop them really fine with the kids getting kind of fussy about them. But if anybody wants, I'll pass this around. So this fennel is one of the main healing foods for the stomach and spleen, together with squash, pumpkin, acorn squash, um, spaghetti squash. And it actually pairs really well with squash. It also pairs really well with onions because you want like uh, sometimes a little sweet with a little aromatic is really, really a good combination. So it pairs really well with onions also. Okay. I'll pass this around if anybody just wants to chew on one or gnaw on one here. I didn't actually try this. I don't know how strong it is. This is like a whole food. Oh, it's okay. Okay. You want to put this out Okay, so we're going to take this. So that's pretty much like a celery, right? It's got the same texture as celery. So it just almost looks like so. You don't know what you're buying. Terrible chef. It's good for Salmon? That sounds really good. I've never had it with salmon. Yeah. This is a horrible. This is, they shouldn't be cutting out a plate. Breaking every rule of history here. Anybody I'll try to keep the stems. I usually the stems what I do is I'll stir fry the stems just because they're a little more fried. Okay. So just to kind of go for the cooling trifecta, another way we can cool the body off in summer is we cool the heart, we can cool the stomach. So endive cools the heart, uh, cools the liver, the uh, fennel cools the stomach, and still good for the spleen, and artichokes the liver, right? Remember, artichokes are our main cholesterol lowering food. They're one of the most powerful foods for high cholesterol, especially for people that we have liver cholesterol. Um, they're a super healthy food that we should be eating all the time. They're very liver cleansing. They're delicious. These are the artichoke hearts, but you can also eat the whole beef, right? When we say we eat artichoke, when we use artichoke leaf in herbal medicine, when you buy it from a company, what part are we using? What's that? Heart. You're, we're actually getting like the leaf leaf of a plant, and it looks like a thistle. Have you ever seen like an artichoke? Farm? The, the leaves just look like a thistle from the Nebraska roadside. The globe, which is like the top part that has these we call them artichoke leaves, but they're really not. It's part of the flower head. So we're eating like the hearts from inside the top of them. But in herbal medicine, we use for tinctures the actual leaf of the plant. So you can grow like one artichoke plant and that will give you enough food for your whole family for a year. It's like a burdock, it just grows huge. So I don't want too much in it here. These are pre-made, so that's easy. I don't know where we're going with this. This is all kind of like in my mind still. So, 
not sure. Some of spontaneous <laughs> Yeah. 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 Plastic bowls. All my pet peeves of cooking all in one place. <laughs> Like, I don't know how artichoke friendly people are. Some people hate artichoke hearts. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times summer is traditionally like the only season where we would eat something raw, right? Because of the heat of summer, it's actually good to eat raw food because it cools your body and digestion more. But the rest of the time of year, we would not do that. So what I bought at Whole Foods that I thought was the coolest thing is a Herbs de Provence vinaigrette. So this is a vinaigrette, but it has the famous French blend Herbs de Provence, right? Everybody knows that blend? It's the same as kind of herbs with lavender. Yeah, so it's Italian herbs, but with lavender. lavender. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> do French pe French people do they like? I don't know. Do they agree with that? They might. I don't know. They might have. I got the two languages in my brain. That's a good way to think of it, though. It is like Italian herbs. Oh. Um, so this is herbs. This is the famous spice blend that's used in French cooking. Used a lot on chicken and duck and poultry. Anybody use it for any other types of foods? I throw it on fish. Fish, yeah, fish would be good. So it's basically Italian type spices with lavender. So it has an unusual kind of flair. I honestly just tried this with the class. It wasn't the flavor I was going for. But we'll just do like a little vinegar. We don't want to overpower the bitter, right? We don't want it to be too. Oily. You know, you should never get a salad that looks like dripping and swinging in oil. You just want to, oh, we forgot to piece of the heart out. You sprinkle this in. So sprinkle a little bit of that on there to make it look really fancy. Got a lot of textures we're playing with here, too. A little bit more to cover up the ground. Anybody wants to eat artichoke? You know, artichoke. One of my favorite foods. <laughs> the artichoke oh, board of California need to get a bit more powerful. I don't think I really advertise. Right when the artichoke dip got popular in America, that's the first thing I went on is that the artichoke council found a way to get Americans to eat artichokes covered in butter and mayonnaise and everything and swimming in it. Right? It's actually the dairy board that helped that one. What's that? So it's actually the dairy board that helped. Dairy board, maybe the dairy board too. Yeah. You ever watch that Portlandia where they have the broccoli board? <laughs> to watch that episode. Yeah. That show was exactly like everyone in Portland and the Smith stereotype. Yeah, people that I know that live there say oh, that too. Portland. Okay, I'm just going to try one more of these for this. Let's yeah. see how this is. Yeah. I'm not making any claims that you're all going to like this, but it, I guarantee it's going to be super healthy. Yeah, this is oh, wow. <laughs> So there's something about that vinaigrette and don't like. I wish I had it. So artichoke hearts and the artichoke leaves, is there one part of your cholesterol or are they the same? The leaves are better for the cholesterol and more, more powerful, but the hearts still do more cholesterol too. Okay. Would everybody have a little um, little bit of that? Artichoke hearts. Give everybody a little bit of yeah, little yeah. cups or something there to try it. So good. 
Surprised they haven't been tried or a joke or a joke. Okay, that's why I don't teach a lot of cooking classes, which is kind of like a room. And there's a mess everywhere. <laughs> okay, so this is one example of a summer solstice food, right? Because it's cooling, it's raw, it cools all the internal organs off, it's just ready for summer, right? Um, not my favorite flavor of vinaigrette. I should have. I was going to get this carrot miso vinaigrette that I should have done that. Okay. Um, I also wanted to give a shout out to past student Andrea, who owns Artemis Tree. Um, she has this. I just noticed this the other day. This art formula here. That's really a pretty, pretty good formula. <laughs> Oh, when I saw this, I texted her and said, Good job. So, this is from Artemis Key in Omaha. This is called Anapata. Okay, so it has Linda. Good job. Lemon Mom. Good job. Holy basil, that's a good job. <laughs> um, popcorn. Which one? Guess what? She passed it in berry leaf and flower. Raspberry leaf. Uh -huh. That one, like, I not sure. I'll try it now. Um, Lacy berry. Probably she don't. This is also like an art tea. So it's not only tasty in a certain way and therapeutic, it's also supposed to look very artful. So the lacy adds a really artsy element to it. Nice. Uh, lotus stamen, great herb <laughs> we don't use in that. Yeah. So she's got an aquatic plant to cool the body. Rooibos, which is one of my favorite summer teas, and apple. That's a pretty interesting art tea blend. So this would be good for the physical heart or the emotional heart. It'd also just be a really good summer tea because it'd be really cooling for the body and heart. So props out to her. And her artwork is really cool. Did a really good job with all this. So anahata means unhurt or un refers to the fourth chakra of the heart. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of research. Unbroken and what? Unhurt. So a little prop out to her. So she did a good job with that. Okay. Okay, we made it through on the cooking phase. <laughs> How's everybody like the salad? Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. I just don't like the dressing. The dressing doesn't pull it together for me. No, it needs so to be a little, little more, more vinegary. Yeah, a little more yeah. Vinegar. That's what I thought it was going to be. So, yeah. So, <laughs> the interplay of like there's a little sweet, there's a little bitter, and I wanted the vinaigrette to have like a little bit of a sour flavor to make it all come together. But, so healthy, right? A lot of times we just eat things because they're healthy. <laughs> <laughs> it feels good to do it, though. I know sometimes it's exciting as a pizza or something, but it is. The body gets excited, right? So this is the time of year where we usually eat a lot of fish, too, and sushi and raw fish. <laughs> And I think I sent a Facebook post out that the king salmon is running and available this year. Some years there is no salmon. Uh, but the king salmon is really special. That's considered like the most powerful of all the wild fish and all the wild food and the ones that neighbors went really wild for. Got a healing property. It's super expensive. But um, just get a little bit. Give to the family, right? 
even if you can't afford like a lot of it, just get a little, little, little strip of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you want to eat that skin off that thing too. That's the best part of the fish, right? Okay. Right? <laughs> Every time you go to a family thing now, because my kids eat, eat salmon skin, that's like our favorite thing. Um, anytime someone's throwing fish skin away, like, do you want the skin? Do you want that? Even if it's like catfish or something else. Um, <laughs> farm raised catfish or something. Um, so king salmon is running. It's probably one of the best things you can put into your body. That's food. It's hard to eat, and it is the best tasting salmon ever. And it, it has to be never frozen, which you can only get right now. So you have to go to absolutely fresh seafood and get it. Get a sliver. I don't know if Whole Foods and some of those places have it. They might, but absolutely fresh has it. I like to support them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Nicholas. I feel like we made it through the solstice a little part eight. Any questions about the solstice, the heart, food, herbs for the heart, physically, emotionally, diet changes for summer? No? I think we're good then. Okay. I'm going to close the chapter on the solstice. This is good.